Hello, in this clip I'm going to do some trade accounting vocabulary and we're going to think about what a uh, different country's relationship with the rest of the world actually means. So to start out, let's look at the U.S. economy in 2017. So this is GDP by component. So almost 70% was consumer spending. That's the bulk of it. Uh, we have investment and government spending there, and then net exports was negative three percent. Okay, now the whole the whole economy grew by two point five percent. So when we think about trade, we often need to get a grip on the fact that it's the smallest part of the GDP, uh, and it's a negative number for countries like the United States. But that isn't necessarily bad. Okay, there's many reasons for that. One of which. Uh, is that this unemployment rate uh, stays low and it, it's a check on inflation because prices will be lower, right? So if you had the case where you had uh, in the United States, say, um, you know, sugar production, uh, you know, so U.S. sugar, okay, and let's say that the equilibrium price of sugar in the United States uh, was 10 cents. Okay, so this is price and this is quantity, uh, and then this is supply and this is demand, and then and then the world price. Let's say that there are there are cheaper places out there uh, to produce sugar. Okay, uh, and let's say that that's uh, you know seven cents or so. Uh, what would be what we would want to see really is that the it would be better off for the U.S. consumers if some of that world sugar or to make its way over to the United States. Now that of course is going to increase demand. That's a little crooked, sorry. Um, over here, okay, because now there's new buyers. It's going to put upward pressure on the price, but it's also going to increase the supply over here in the United States and it's going to put downward pressure on the price. So American consumers will get cheaper sugar uh, and the world producers will get a higher price. Okay, so we've got a, a win on both sides. Now obviously the loser here would be the U.S. sugar producer, right? U.S. sugar producer doesn't like this because it's more competition, but the U.S. consumer definitely should. So here is um, U.S. GDP by um, uh, component in the last several years. So you can see the, the biggest part here is consumer spending and it's rising. Uh, government spending is not rising too much and that's actually pretty good because it means that the deficit isn't growing. Uh, and then investment uh, is growing a little bit too and that's really good. So here's that negative uh, three to four percent. Okay, so not that big a deal. And you can actually look up the numbers. This was tw um, 2017 uh, GDP, uh, 19 trillion dollars. What we're really talking about is, uh, you know, six hundred billion dollars. That's the deficit here, which we used a different word. Okay. Now, when goods are imported or exported into the United States, it's not done by the government either. Okay. So in this case, this was a, a producer, you know, basically a sugar farmer somewhere, and then this in here, who who buys the sugar? Well, it's going to be bakeries, U.S. consumers. Uh, you know, beer companies, soda companies, juice companies, anybody that uses sugar, okay, is going to be on there. So there's lots of other effects, just something like sugar, okay. Um, this has caused many economists. This is 2015, uh, Greg Mankiw. Um, economists don't agree on much, but but often when they do, um, we, uh, we tend to agree on uh, lowering trade barriers and what's called free trade, okay. Uh, President Trump is a, a skeptic of all of this, so we're going to see how some of his uh, actions in global trade uh, are going to affect the economy. We'll find out, I suppose. So, so just some vocabulary here. When you have free trade, we sometimes call it an open economy. If you think about the United States, within the United States, we are a huge free trade zone. You can trade whatever you want as long as that product is legal across state state uh, boundaries, and there's really very little to stop you. Right? You don't have to pay a tax and uh, you can just trade, and if you somebody runs into uh, some kind of problems, you can you can take it up with the Federal Trade Commission. World Trade Organization tries to do a similar thing around the world. The opposite, of course, would be a closed economy where there's no trade. Uh, North Korea and Iran have have some of this, uh, and and we tend to see higher prices and uh, less um, you know productive labor in those places. Obviously, the winners throughout all this would be the consumers; they get lower prices. Anybody who makes money in shipping or retail, things like that. Um, developing countries are going to get richer. Um, the 
people that might not win would be the high-priced producers. Politicians might lose because it gives them less control, less things to talk about. And uh, in developed countries, if you don't have skills and the uh, product that you make went to a developing country, uh, you might be a loser. Okay, So flip side again, benefits, lower prices, more competition, job opportunities for producers, job opportunities in buyer countries. So in places where we import a lot of products, like the United States, there's lots of jobs associated with that, right? If you drive a foreign car, um, it's you know fixed by an American or something like that. Uh, and then finally, uh, the the opportunity cost of producing uh, in the United States, right? Do we really want T-shirts or washcloths to be made in a developed country, and would those actually be made by humans? Okay, so economists have measured this. You can pause the video and take a look at that graphic if you want. Uh, the world dropped since we've opened up. Uh, trade to, to many places uh, we've seen uh, just a dramatic decline in the number of people living on a dollar a day okay uh, many of those people are in East Asia uh, Africa is sort of the final frontier of that um, drawbacks of free trade you can get some structural unemployment if the workers that got displaced can't find work you get lower union membership if, uh, if that's important to you and there are some products uh, that are legal or not legal in other places, right? So uh, guns are not legal in Mexico, um, but many uh, folks have tried to export guns to uh, to Mexico, right? Um, similarly, there's products that aren't legal here in the United States and get imported anyway, okay? Here are the uh, types of barriers to free trade. Uh, there's tariffs. That's just to putting a tax on it makes it more expensive. There's... Oh, here are a few important uh, import tariffs, rather, um, that are that are pretty high. The Japan, there's a 700% tax on imported rice. EU has some interesting ones. There's South Korea on automobiles. Uh, Canada's on 28% on leather shoes. Here's some in the United States, um, and there's one. Of, there's Brazil, and there you go. You'll see tariffs, uh, you know, pop up from time to time. This one from last summer, so. Uh, Japan puts a tariff on U.S. beef. Okay, it's going to make it more expensive for Japanese um, consumers, and uh, the U.S. producers, the ranchers, uh, don't get um, don't get another place to sell. Okay, other types of barriers you could put a quota, which is just a limit. You could say there's only so many that, that we can bring in. Um, it's going to be higher prices, less choice. You could do an embargo, so you're just not allowed to trade with Cuba or Syria. Any place like that, uh, you could subsidize. So that means just giving money to an industry locally. Uh, this is kind of controversial because there's not a whole lot of evidence of that. Um, when you actually look at, or rather, dumping, there's not a lot of evidence. There's, there's evidence of uh, um, of subsidies, um, but then the, the the other argument is that sometimes they'll just dump all those products on the market and. Uh, there's not a whole lot of evidence that that happens, but some people say that they do. So this is the EU warning Chinese firms don't dump solar panels on us. Okay, so let's look at a, a couple of well, let's look at a real country here. This is uh, Thailand. Okay, so this is WITS. You can go there. It's the World Bank uh, Integrated Trade um, uh, Database. So this is 2015. In 2015, they uh, in millions of dollars. So 210. Uh, thousand millions, so that'd be 210 billion dollars uh, in products left Thailand. Uh, this is the number of products we want to see what they are, and they traded them to 220 different uh, places around the world. This is the imports, so their exports are slightly more than their imports. Okay, so that means that their net import numbers will be positive. Okay, now when they do those trades, you can see where they're where they're trading to importing and exporting you can see what they're pro what they're producing you know uh, if you really want to get down into this um, you can see what the tariffs are and so on and so forth um, now when they do this so let's say that Thailand uh, exports so the United States is a pretty, pretty big trading partner so is China let's say they export some raw materials to the United States we don't know what they are um, doesn't really matter um, they wouldn't export them to the government they would export them to a company so a company would import these products from Thailand when they do that they're gonna do it in uh, dollars okay and they're gonna send those dollars back to Thailand now in Thailand they don't use dollars 
So the company that ends up with those is going to have to do something with those. And so what they could do is just trade them back in um, on the foreign exchange market, but companies don't like to do that because then you didn't make any return on this global uh, opportunity. So what they'll often do is they'll either um, buy some kind of financial asset, so either a stocks or stocks or bonds, you know, back in the United States with those dollars. They might advertise, or they might open up uh, some kind of you know investment opportunity back in the United States, um, and so or or you know decrease shipping or whatever, right? So what's going to happen here with com with a country like Thailand? They're going to have an, a positive number in what's called their current account. But they're going to have a negative number in their capital account because the the goods are leaving their country, and that's what you're seeing here. But the capital uh, that that they that they earn from that is also going to leave the country. So the the export in goods is going to be positive, but the capital in money funds those U.S. dollars is going to be negative. Okay, so it's always going to match that. And that's what we call balance of payments. I'll show you that in a, in a second here. Here's the United States, much bigger economy. This is uh, 2016. So in the United States, uh, exports were $1.4 trillion. Imports were $2.2 trillion. Uh, these are the number of products. So you can see uh, about the same, actually. That's kind of interesting. Uh, different kind of products and then same number there. Uh, this is actually gives you goods and services, too, which is interesting. Um, and if you look, the U.S. is a current account uh, trade surplus uh, in theirs. So our biggest trading partner is actually Canada, uh, which is interesting there. Um, and let's see here. It looks like China is pretty big too. Uh, these are the products that we that we export. Now the U.S. imports more than they export. So when they do that, those dollars that leave the United States that, that firms buy, those dollars got to come back. Okay, and you'll you'll see that. So uh, the, U the U.S. current account or the net exports is going to be a negative number. But the capital account is going to be a positive number because those funds are going to flow back to the United States. So let's take a look here. This is all just trade accounting. And you'll see this. This is really should be called the trade balance, but they often call it the trade deficit. Okay. So if the value of exports is more than the value of imports, you'll have a trade surplus like we just saw with Thailand. Sometimes we call these net exporting countries. Here are some examples. Now over here, if a country imports more than they export, then those are trade deficits. Right? Um, we call these net importers. So net importing countries: United States, Mexico, Japan, England. Okay, uh, we'll skip that there. Okay, so what the balance of payments is is the measure of trade between the country and the rest of the world. The current account essentially is the the, the stuff account. It also includes income and, and uh, transfers, but those are those are so small. It's really the, the net exports here, right? So a country like Thailand is going to have a positive number in their current account, um, and a country like the United States can have a negative number. Okay. Now the capital account is the other account, and so this is um, the sometimes called the financial account. This is investment. Okay, and currency reserves also includes that. And uh, so, so for the United States. Um, this, this is going to be negative, but then that money is going to flow back in form of the capital account. This will be positive. Thailand, this is going to be positive. This is going to be negative. Okay, so here's the U.S. balance of trade. So this is essentially the the net uh, exports here. So this is um, what it was back in 2016. Okay, uh, this is the cash inflows. So this is the capital account, and then this is the current account. Okay, so outflows being the money paid for. Um, by firms when they want to import uh, goods, and you can look up the whole thing. It's you can get really into it if you want foreign uh, investment. And you can see what's going on, but you'll see stuff like this. So Foxconn is a Chinese company. They're going to build a ten billion dollar factory in the United States. Where did they get the money to do that? Well, they got it from trade. Okay, when American firms paid Foxconn in dollars, it's good to do something with those dollars. So they're going to expand in Wisconsin. Okay, and that's another reason why trade is good. It, it's really why you see a lot of these um, uh, cars that are foreign cars made in the United States, right? So there's uh, Acura making 71% uh, of the cars made in the United States, uh, even though they're a Japanese company. Okay, um, there's Nissan, 55%, Honda, 45%. Here's a specific kind of car, right? So Ford, then Toyota Camry, right? So, 
2013 produced in the United States. These are the cars that are 100% imported, so these are the opposite. And it doesn't make you a bad person if you, you bought it, it's just the other, the other end of it. Um, so there you go.